If you've watched my channel much before, you have probably heard me talk about tone mapping, dynamic tone mapping, iPhone tone mapping, and how I have a love-hate relationship with it. It's great that you can get better dynamic range, but you can really mess up your footage if you're not careful. But now there's a cool new feature within Filmic Pro that can help with that. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Now with Filmic Pro, you can choose the type of tone mapping you shoot with, global or local. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about what tone mapping is and why we use it. Geek, geek alert, alert, geek, geek alert. alert. And I got a friend of mine who knows a lot about this topic to help explain. Hi, I'm Christopher Cohen, CTO of Filmic. So help us out, Chris, what is tone mapping? Tone mapping is what it sounds like, how a, a sensor image processing pipeline maps or remaps the signal coming from a sensor. It's changing or remapping the tone. This is necessary, and in fact, all um, digital cameras that you have ever used have used a form of static tone mapping, and in some cases, dynamic tone mapping. And why do we need it? Tone mapping is necessary because um, s digital sensors see light differently than your eyes do. Our eyes are uh, use rods and cones. It's an accumulation-based system. We perceive light in a very logarithmic way. Digital sensors are just arrays of photodiodes and they see light in a linear way. If you were to look at the raw output of a digital sensor, it wouldn't look very good. And one of the things that most camera systems do is they apply a form of tone mapping. Uh, in most cases, this tone mapping is static, but on phones increasingly, this tone mapping is dynamic. It's dynamic to maximize what those little sensors are able to do. And in most cases, dynamic tone mapping is great. It actually does exactly what it sets out to do. It takes a linear signal gain coming from a very small CMOS sensor, and it maps it into something that is visually pleasing. And so we're getting the best image possible and the best dynamic range, but in my experience, it's not perfect. Dynamic tone mapping is scene adaptive. So instead of a static curve that it's applying to that linear gain, it's applying a situational curve. It's always changing. And that's, for the most part, a good thing. You're getting the most that those that little sensor can pump out at any one time. However, it is, it, it can sabotage you. Um, and you have to be aware of what the pitfalls are. The main pitfall being that when your settings are locked, and I mean your manual settings, and I'm talking about exposure, the image can still shift, which drives me crazy. That's what I meant at the beginning when I talked about tone mapping messing up your footage. And to me, I mainly associate that with iPhones and Apple. Is this an Apple technology or is this extant in other phones? And the answer is no, it's not exclusively an Apple thing. Uh, many phones are using a form of dynamic tone mapping now. Um, in fact, in some Samsung phones, you can turn it off completely if you want to. And that's pretty cool. I wish you could do that with an iPhone, but you can't yet. As a filmmaker, I want all the control over the image, the manual control that I can get. Tone mapping is implemented quite differently from device to device. Um, even amongst Apple's own device family, tone mapping manifests in very different ways. Some of the earliest phones that used tone mapping, Apple didn't actually advertise it at all. Um, but it would have a very subtle lifting of the shadows effect. Now, Apple has leaned into it as kind of a, a marketing through line, but it's been there for about 10 years. The first time I noticed dynamic tone mapping was on my iPhone 8 Plus, and it was on the telephoto lens only. The wide was clean, but today it's absolutely ubiquitous across all the cameras on the iPhone. One thing to note though, is that this technology, tone mapping in general, was not really designed with video in mind. Uh, it was designed with photography in mind. Video was kind of an after, afterthought. And the downsides of dynamic tone mapping are that uh, continuity is problematic. You can you know, have a light change in the scene and the dynamic tone mapping system will dynamically adjust to the new light source and it will compress highlights and lift shadows opportunistically. This is not what you want in video. You don't want the exposure to be changing in unpredictable ways. In fact, sometimes you want things to be underexposed. Maybe you're going for a specific style. Maybe you want to cast something into silhouette. Unfortunately, what you'll find is that dynamic tone mapping, for the most part, fights against this, though your settings do matter. Primarily meaning locking your exposure. 
But as mentioned earlier, the image can shift, the exposure can shift, and that's not good. And this is partly due to the type of tone mapping that's being used, global or local. What are the differences between global tone mapping and local tone mapping? The hint's in the name, right? Global tone mapping, what it does is it, um, I guess in a simplistic way, it scans the entire image and gets a, a gray world score. That's what it's called. And based on that gray score, it will prescribe a, um, a tone map profile to that particular frame and it will apply it. So in some situations uh, where there's bright light, it may prescribe something that looks kind of like an S-curve. In low light situations, it may give you more an exaggerated logarithmic type curve. In situations where you have mixed lighting, very bright brights, very dark darks, it'll lift shadows and it'll compress highlights. It will constantly be changing that tone curve. And for the most part, global tone mapping works very well. Apple has refined it significantly over the years. And for the most part, you won't notice it, but it is there and it is working all the time. And global tone mapping is what we're accustomed to and primarily use when shooting with Filmic Pro. As a side note though, the native camera app primarily uses local tone mapping. Local tone mapping is that. It is the same thing, but it's local. And when I say local, I mean on a per pixel level, each pixel in the DSP or the shader actually inspects its neighboring pixels. It's called a pixel neighborhood. And instead of looking for a gray score on um, an entire frame, it creates a gray score on a per pixel level and will actually change the luminance profile again on a per pixel level. The advantages of this are that it does everything that global tone mapping does, but better. Better in the sense that you're gonna get more, even more details in the shadows. You're gonna get even um, better highlight compression. It's just gonna maximize your dynamic range. There's, there's nothing else you can squeeze out of that lemon. It's dry. The, the disadvantage of local tone mapping is that it produces an image that is very variable. It will change significantly based on what kind of ambient light you have, any kind of light changes. If a car's headlights briefly appear in a window and then are gone again, you're gonna notice it because the tone mapping system is gonna try and compensate for it. And so local tone mapping is that look you see, especially using the native camera app, if you're shooting the sky and you see the image almost flickering, that's local tone mapping. And it can be good in certain situations and bad. For me personally, it's typically bad, but there are times that it can be helpful. Local tone mapping is great for photography. I don't recommend it for video unless you absolutely need to maximize your dynamic range. And, and for some shooting situations, this is appropriate. Um, if, you're, if it's a single camera operator and they're doing like a documentary or they're just capturing news, that's great. By all means, set it to local tone mapping and get as much information uh, archived as possible. But if you're shooting specifically with a multicam kind of workflow, where um, the iPhone is like either A cam or B cam, and you're trying to match that to another device, you're gonna have a really hard time because local tone mapping will be compensating depending on the field of view, depending on the light, depending on light changes. It's just gonna be a big headache and it's gonna cause you some, some light trauma editing in post. All right, we've now come full circle. We know what tone mapping is and why we use it. And now we know we can actually choose it in Filmic Pro. Now in Filmic Pro, uh, we can choose global and local tone mapping. You really need to choose the right tool for the right job. For most people, even though global tone mapping doesn't quite squeeze as much juice out of that lemon, it's the more appropriate option. Global tone mapping will produce a more consistent image across a variety of fields of view, and it will be less prone to um, rapidly adapting to light changes. It will still do that, but it won't be quite as severe. So for most people, I recommend using global tone mapping. And that's primarily what I do too. Now here's an example of shooting the same scene, one with global and one with local. Global, local. Global, local. 
If you're moving the camera at all, I would say choose global 99% of the time, unless you're in a very high contrast scene. But again, if there's any movement, it may appear that the exposure is shifting, which I do not like. So it'll just depend on what your shooting situation is. But as Chris said, I would pick global as my default and then use local as needed. But I gotta say, it's really cool that we can now choose those in Filmic Pro. Well, thank you to Chris for helping explain this somewhat geeky topic, but an important topic, I gotta say. It's really interesting the way we have to be almost computer nerds sometimes to really understand what our phones are doing and how we shoot with them. I hope you understand it better now. I know I do. And if you wanna learn more about shooting with Filmic Pro, check out my online course, The Complete Guide to Filmic Pro. Link for that is in the description below. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.